Good Monday Matters. I hope you had a wonderful Sabbath and looking forward to a good week. We are well on our way to spring. I'm not sure exactly when spring starts, but it's pretty soon. And here in Middle Tennessee, we're in that spring kind of weather of a couple of good days and some cold days, a lot of wind, all that stuff. Uh, Anyway, I hope you're looking forward to a good week. Uh, I'm going to talk fast today because I want to do a lot in seven minutes. And uh, to be honest, I doubt if I get it done in seven minutes, but that's never stopped us before. Uh, This is Monday Matters, where every Monday I take just a minute and spend some time talking about uh, a thought or an idea that hopefully helps you to live a happier, healthier, and maybe holier life. And that's what this is about today. Last week, I presented the idea of, of Lent and continuing revival, kind of tying those things together. I uh, talked about my experience going to Asbury and the revival that's taking place. Continues, Doris and I went to see last night uh, the movie uh, uh, Jesus Revolution. There's just a revival moving through our, through our church, through our community, through our nation, perhaps through the world. God's doing something. And as Henry Blackaby said years and years ago, Uh, What we need to do is figure out what God's doing and become a part of that. So I want to, I said in in the Lent continuing revival kind of talk that there are five things that I recognize were important in my life in bringing revival about confession, repentance, humility, focus, and expectation, those five things. And I kind of have the idea, see how this goes, but through the course of Lent that will take each one of those and talk a little bit about each one. Uh, Today would be confession. Uh, I wrote a blog about that at branchesblog.com. That's a shameless plug. You can go there if you like. But uh, I wrote a blog about that. And uh, today, I I want to just the the theme, the thought, the the phrase has been running through my mind, honest to God. I want to talk about being honest to God. That part of confession is, is being honest to God. And it seems to me that if I am to continue this spirit of revival, if I'm going to continue uh, during this Lenten season of of growing closer to God, uh, then it's going to require me being honest to God. Uh, So I want to talk about that very, very quickly and then tell you a story. Honest to God in three areas, I think. Honest to God uh, about my feelings. Uh, In the 51st Psalm, David says, restore to me the joy of my salvation. He's honest. I don't don't have a lot of joy right now because of my choices, because of what I've done. I'm not real happy. I don't don't have joy. Now, God knows anyway, but there's something about confessing that to him, being honest and saying, you know, I'm I'm just angry today, Lord. I am I'm I'm sad today. I'm I'm afraid today to be honest to God about your feelings. Uh, Jacob read a book, gave it to his mother, and Doris gave it to me, My How Things Have Changed. I used to give books to them. Now they're reading books and giving them to me. But uh, the title of the book was, uh, I laid it aside, don't know where I put it, but is uh, Praying Like Monks, uh, Living Like Monks, Praying Like Fools. And it's about honesty in prayer. Just saying, God, this is how I feel. Now, so here's an example of that. Uh, we go into a praise and worship service and our pastor says, wonderfully so, I want you to raise your hands and praise God. Well, there are some times I'm, I'm saying to God, God, I don't feel like this. I don't feel like praising. I I, I, I don't. I, I do believe that I can move myself into the presence of God. And so I do that. And I think it's important, even if I don't feel like it, to raise my hands to to lift my voice to him, to to pray to him. I think those things are important. But it's also important to be willing in the midst of that to say, and I'm not feeling it right now, God, just to be honest about our feelings. This is, I'm having a hard day. My wife and I struggled on the way to church. We had an argument. I just, I don't feel honest about your feelings. Here's the second thing. If I'm going to do this in seven minutes, I might be a lot faster than that. The second thing is honest about uh, my what did I say? Oh, honest about my frustration. Uh, I, I love the story of Jonah. When when Jonah uh, 
comes out of the belly of the whale. He goes to Nineveh, preaches, has a great revival. And the next scene is Jonah sitting under the juniper tree. Uh, I think it was a juniper tree. And, and he, God says, are you mad? He said, I'm so mad I could die. I'm, I'm frustrated. I knew this would happen. I, you know, I'm, I'm just, I'm frustrated with you, God. I think it's okay to express our frustration. God, I, I know you always come through. I know you answer prayer, but you need to know that's not the way I prayed about it. And I'm, I'm a little frustrated. I thought that promotion would come by now. I thought our church would be doing better than this. I thought my kids would be, would, would have turned back to you by now. I'm frustrated to be honest about that. I, I, God knows, but there's something about confessing, saying with my mouth, here's my feelings, here's my frustration. And then finally, to be honest about our faith. One of my all-time favorite verses is a simple little verse. It was in my Bible reading today, which is kind of what prompted this whole thing. It's in my Bible reading today in Mark uh, chapter 9, I believe it is, uh, where the where the Jesus is, the, the, the man comes and asks Jesus to pray for his son. Jesus said, do you believe? He says, oh Lord, I believe. Help thou my unbelief. I, I believe a little bit, but I don't believe a lot. And uh, and help me to believe more. To be honest about our faith. Lord, I don't, I don't know. I mean, it seems like it's been a long time and you haven't answered that prayer. You I don't, my faith is weak. I wrote in, I'm reading Amos's Bible this year. And so I wrote in Amos's Bible, Amos, just believe that you can believe. That's enough. Just start with that. Well, I believe I can believe if God helps me. To be honest to God about our feelings, about our frustrations, about our faith, to let God know where we are. I think, I think it keeps me closer to him. It keeps me open to allow him to work in my life. And it keeps me in this state of revival, in this, in this penitent time of, of Lent. So here's the story, very, very quickly. It is a three-part story. It's really complicated, so I have to tell it fast, and you're just going to have to hang in there with me. Three parts. Uh, 45 years ago, my sister, my baby sister, Sherilyn, was diagnosed with leukemia. Doris and I were singing at a, at a little revival in a Nazarene church in Hendersonville, on Friday night, we had gotten a, do a diagnosis that day. On Friday night, we're singing in this revival. And we went and sang. I don't remember who the evangelist was. I don't remember what the sermon was about. I do remember at the end of the service, and when he invited people to prayer, I prayed, God, heal my sister. And I believed. I believed that God would. And absolutely believed and did everything right. Confessed it and talked about it and held on to it. And three weeks later, she died. Uh, and I'm okay with that. I mean, I worked through that and, and God and I made up and we were fine. So that's, that's part one of this story. Here's part two. Uh, about four years ago, I was speaking for a conference in Hendersonville for a, uh, an, an, as, or, uh, uh, an Aldersgate conference. I was speaking and, and as I was speaking, I, I just said in passing, we walk in this building, I said in passing, man, I grew up in this church. This looks like a Nazarene church. It's just the, the architecture, the way, this looks like a Nazarene church. And it had nothing to do with my message, but I went ahead and spoke. At the end of the message, the guy who's in charge of the thing came up to me and he said, uh, it's interesting you said that. This was a Nazarene church. We bought this from the Nazarene church. And when he said that, all of a sudden it dawned on me that this was the very church that I had been into, had been in at that time 40 years earlier and prayed, God heal, heal Sherilyn, and that didn't happen. It's the, it's the exact church. They had taken out the pews and put in chairs, but I sat in the, I sat in the exact spot where I was sitting that night. I just sat down there for a moment. And when I did, a thought popped into my mind that I had never had before. God said to me, You've held this against me for 40 years. And I said, God, that is not true. I, it's not. I, I, I confess that. I, I gave that. No, that's not true. And God said, no, it is true. You've held it against me for 40 years. And all of a sudden I said, I, you know, I have. When people would pray for healing, I would believe, but kind of not really. I would not be at the front of the, of the group to lay my hands on it. I didn't ask for healing. Uh, 
And I confess that, God, you're right, and I'm so sorry, and I don't understand all this, but I do confess. I've held it against you, and I repent. And, 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 and God just came, and it was, it was wonderful. Part three of that story. About 15 years before that, are you keeping up with all this? About 15 years before that, I had lost my voice. Not, not completely, but just lost the ability to project, to really, you know, to, to uh, you could, you know, as you're speaking and you just, if I push this a tiny bit more, it's going to crack. I, I just can't sing as loud as I I lost my voice. Uh, so have that prayer. God, I, I'm so sorry. Doris and I went back to our hotel room that they had provided for us and rested, came back. I was speaking again that night, came back and there, and worship is going on. I'm standing beside Doris. I'm singing. And Doris looked at me and said, what is wrong with you? I said, what do you mean? She said, you are singing so loud. I've never heard you sing this loud before. And I didn't know, but, but God had restored my voice. And I've never had that problem since then. Uh, other than this morning, I've got a little bit of cold and a little hoarse this morning. But it was like God said, okay, once you finally are willing to be honest with me, then I'll give you a full voice to say the things that you want to say. I don't know what that means to you, but it just it just said to me that 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 God deserves my absolute honesty. And I would encourage you, if you want to be if you want to be close to him uh, in this Lenten season, be honest to God, telling him about your feelings, about your frustrations, and about your faith. Just be honest. So here's my suggestion. This week, ask God to reveal to you any part of your life where you are less than honest with him. And, and, and confess that. Be honest with him about that and see if he doesn't give you a, a voice this week. Thank you for being a part of this. Uh, I'll try to post something each day about being honest to God. Uh, hope you have a great week. God bless you, and I will see you next Monday.